when you approach the Quran, there are three things about the Quran. One is you need to know how to read. Uh, memorizing, all of that is part of that. Read, recite, memorize. Number two is understand. There's the translation. There is the explanation. And that's, that's understanding. And number three is acting upon it. So there's three you know, parts of this triangle, this trinity. Islamic trinity on uh, record. I think Islam hates us. They have done nothing except wreak havoc and terror for our faith and our religion. The professed values of the Western countries, democracy and constitutional and human rights, at least they should speak about this. And it's like, I feel like religion just is making it worse. They say they believe in God, but I think they're just anxious. Before we talk about politics, let's look at the fundamental things. That we, when we stand up to those who oppress our communities, that Allah accepts from us that as a form of jihad. And it requires people with guts to follow God in an era that everyone does whatever is right in their eye. Will you distance yourself from those who think differently? Or will you join us at the table and talk about what is really important? This is the Al Maida Initiative. Conversation without compromise. Musa, thank you for coming on the Al Maida Initiative podcast. Thank you for inviting me. So, the basic premise of today's discussion is we're going to make two episodes today. Uh -huh. So, I need to say this because if I just make an episode about the Quran, uh -huh. people are going to be like, why don't you talk about the Bible in the show? Because, you know, that's coming next episode. So, okay. uh, you, can, you can watch this. You can watch this sort of two weeks in a row as it's released. And the premise of the Al Maida Initiative as an organization is to facilitate friendly and honest conversations between Christians and Muslims. Mm -hmm. So, like a lot of the time when we have these conversations, it's either people like yelling at each other in Speaker's Corner in London, <laughs> uh, or, you know, that's not really our problem in Seattle. In Seattle, it's more likely that people are trying so hard not to offend each other, they say nothing at all. Yes. So, so the premise of this show is to have friendly and honest conversations. And my hope at the end of this is that a Christian watching this can have a better idea of what, the, what a Muslim believes about what the Quran is. Mm -hmm. And a Muslim watching this has a better understanding about what Christians believe the Bible is. Because, you know, even if you disagree with someone's position, you should at least understand what it is and have a sort of fair-minded analysis of it. Yes. So that's kind of all we're trying to accomplish here. Um, nobody's trying to kind of like get each other. Well, I, I'm not trying to get you. <laughs> I don't know about me. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Feel free to try and get me, by the way. Yes, yes. yes. It's good for, uh, it might, might not be good for my um, morale, but it'll be good for sort of uh, YouTube views. Oh, yes, yes. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll make an attempt. It's for everyone. <laughs> well, thank you for being here. So yes. um, I'll let you kick us off here. Okay. So um, give me a kind of brief introduction to, you know, who you are, what you believe about the Quran and the sort of sort of general sort of Quran 101 for someone who doesn't, you know, know what that means. I know it's a huge subject. Yes. But at least we got to start somewhere, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Uh, okay. So starting with myself, uh, I'm Musa. Uh, I was, okay, let's start chronologically. I was born and raised in Dubai uh, to Indian immigrant parents. Uh, did my schooling around 15 years in Dubai and then moved to India. Uh, did college there, engineering, uh, computer science, joined Microsoft, worked there for six years, and then another five years in Seattle now. So that's where I am. I'm a senior software engineer at Microsoft. I also, uh, you know, had the opportunity to do some decent uh, Quranic learning in Dubai, you know, reading, recital. Uh, so my language is a little more Arabic in that sense, uh, my recitation. So otherwise, I don't have any formal education in, in, in religion other than the basic, you know, like Sunday school sort of thing uh, in Dubai. Um, but then I, 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 I built a relationship with the Quran, uh, specifically where, you know, I used to be this guy who used to like, like to recite the Quran. So the Quran is, you know, it also has a recital to it, right? There's, right. there's the content of it and then there's the recital of it. And it's very melodious and it's very interesting. And I used to like, when I was in eighth grade, seventh grade, I used to like to recite a lot of the Quran. So you can think that, hey, every day after school, I'm coming and I'm reciting and... 
like one year I'm reciting like the Quran like five times, six times. That's like 600 pages, five times, right? And I just used to love doing that. And I think on one occasion when I was trying to, almost finishing the Quran, the Imam comes up to me while I was in the mosque. We had a mosque nearby. Uh, I used, uh, thanks to my dad, I used to have this habit of going to the mosque like three to four times a day for five time prayer, except for the morning one, we used to go to the masjid for prayers. It was close by. So, um, so when I was completing the Quran, the Imam comes to me and asks, hey, like I see you reciting the Quran, you know, regularly. Do you know what's in it? Like, do you understand it? I'm like, no, you know, I'm, I'm Desi, I'm Indian, I don't understand Arabic. And, and in Dubai, you don't need to know Arabic to, to you know, get your way. It's right, 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 right. Enough. Yes. So he asked me, do you know what is in, I mean, do you understand this? I'm like, no, this is ninth grade, I think. Yeah. And I was like, oh, you should learn. And then I give the Muslim, inshallah. <laughs> <laughs> and inshallah, yes. I'm like, no, <laughs> I won't do. Uh, smart man, smart man. <laughs> because uh, for those of you who are cultural outsiders, uh, inshallah usually means no, but it's God's fault, right? <laughs> no, 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 it just means if Allah wills. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I know what it literally means. <laughs> yes, yes. So, so God willing, we will do it. Uh, and it's it's kind of a, but it's turned to be a. So the the mus the Islamic inshallah is that anything you say you are going to do in the future, you say with the condition that inshallah that I will come to your your podcast inshallah means I will come I will do my best effort but then everything is with Allah like maybe my car might crash maybe something might happen something else might come up but inshallah right you are supposed to do that that's how the Quran says so uh, in Surah Al-Kahf so uh, Surah 18 so uh, but then people have made it into like yeah, if you invite somebody to dinner and he says, Inshallah, I'll, I'll think about it. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know, which means he's not coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a Muslim, Inshallah. We, we have the same thing in the Bible, actually. Okay. Uh, in the book of James, it says, uh, do not say, we'll do this, this, and this. But say, if the Lord wills, mm. um, you will do this and this. So I completely respect the premise of the Inshallah, but I'm also entertained by how yes. it's functionally used. Yes, yes. Even... Uh, President Biden mentioned that in his debate uh, with uh, Donald Trump uh, last uh, 2020 presidential debates. He's like, yeah, Donald Trump said this and that and, you know, I will do this. And then when? Like, like I, I'll, 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 I'll release my tax returns. <laughs> when? Inshallah. Yeah. I mean, he actually said that yeah. in, in, a, in a U.S. presidential debate. He should have said it in the last one. I'm definitely going to be the candidate, inshallah. <laughs> Yes, yes. So you know, people know what kind of timing this is being <laughs> given. You know, yeah, Biden just dropped out of the race. Um, yes, good for good for everyone. Um, yes. So so where were we? Yes. So so I said, Inshallah. He said, No, well, that's that's not going to work. And then uh, number two, and then uh, he kind of said, No, you have to really look into this. And then and then uh, I started reading uh, the meaning. So I'm like, Okay, now I'm not going to read. The, just just recite, I'm going to read and understand. So I just picked up like Mohsin Ali Khan, Mohsin Khan, uh, the translation of the Quran, Arabic, English, Arabic, Arabic, English, Arabic, Arabic, English, Arabic, verse by verse, verse by verse, verse by verse, verse by verse. And I just read the Quran like that. Like I would read like maybe three pages. It would take longer. Yes, because I'm trying to understand what's going on. And then I would review it at the end. What did I recite? And then next day, next day, next day, next day, bit by bit, I was done. And that was really nice. At the end of that, I knew Arabic because I'm doing this very consistently. Arabic, English, Arabic. Now I know what's going on. Right. So, so that's how I learned Arabic, at least Quranic Arabic. Right, right. And kind uh, of hard to order a latte in Dubai with Quranic Arabic, right? You got to learn some Khaliji as well. Yes, uh, yeah, but but this is Fusha Arabic, so yeah. it's very nice. It's, yeah, so it's useful. Yeah, it's, it's still functional and useful. It's just not what people speak in. Yes, yes, yes. It's uh, it's different there. Yeah, that 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 is true. That is true. But then it's it's people understand. People understand. It's not it's not like it's like big difference. Like a dialect. Yeah, uh, yeah. People speak like, eh, what are you what are you gonna do? Like you know, what up? Like that's not what you'll see in the Quran, right? Yeah. What does what up mean? 
like right, right. ain't nobody got time for that what's ain't what is nobody got time that's how people speak yes and that's just that's their fault <laughs> yeah 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 so so that, that's that's yeah that's, that's anyway so 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 i don't know i think i'm taking too much no time. you're fine keep, keep uh, going we're having yeah. fun that's, that's all that matters okay okay so so yeah so that's how i started building the relationship with the quran so now coming back to your uh, question as to what is the quran in my life it is a guide right dhalik al kitab la rayba fi a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem this is the book in which uh, there is guidance like every day in our prayers we ask ihdina siratal mustaqim oh allah like show us the straight path right show us ihdina give us guide us to the straight path and then right after that in surah baqarah which is the second surah it starts with alif lam mim dhalik al kitab la rayba fi huda lil muttaqin this is the book in which uh, there is no doubt it is a guidance for those who are pious right it is a guidance so it is a guide it is a light in the darkness of the world it is uh, it is a tasbeet it is you know gives you steadfastness when you are you know difficulties it keeps your foot hold firm and that's how the quran is in my life um yeah in different aspects like you know like hey i need to have kids but then can i afford them right it's hard uh in you know this inflation and all of that right mm-hmm. but allah says you know la taqtulu auladakum min khashyata imlaq or khashyata imlaq that do not kill your children fearing poverty right nahnu narzuqukum we will provide for you uh wa iyyakum and you so so don't worry about don't worry about like finances you know god will take care of it is what he says so now i could still say no it's still very expensive or you can just trust in god and say he said he'll take care of it um, so so he, it's a guide right it's a guide to make these big decisions in life and even for the smaller ones like where you have a dispute with your parents uh for whatever reason like dispute you have a misunderstanding whatever you know it, it's kind of complicated life is complicated and then you see um that wa bil walidayni ihsana that you should uh have the best of character uh, with your parents right you have to do the best ihsana and people and you can go into tafsir and go into detail and ask what ihsana means ihsana means like you give to them before they ask right that's the ideal that god wants you to be at right so um you know kind of moving away from religion like if you have if you are joining a job like hey you got a position at a company you got hired into a job uh and you're like oh go do it go do your thing and like no i need to know what my responsibilities are what are we what am i going to do how am i supposed to do it right like you want you need some expectations to be set so that you can you can you know meet those expectations or exceed those expectations but you need a you need those expectations so when god created us and he did not create us without any purpose right so he created us for a purpose and and if 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 he, if he does not set those expectations with us it's it's injustice to us because we don't know what to be what we are supposed to be doing so the quran is that document that sets those expectations it sets that framework and it's a it's a fairly big document like 600 pages which will apply in different uh, parts of life it has stories of the past it has information as to what's to come and about how to do your today so your past tomorrow and today is kind of managed in this framework sort of document and it is a light it is a guide it is a tasbeet it is you know kind of steadfastness where you need to go on that's 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 my so uh, so what struck me about uh, the quran when i read it the first time is you know we talk about it being a big document and sure it's it's big but actually it's not compared to like say Sahih al-Bukhari or the Bible mm-hmm. right it's not like a massive yes read like for me it probably took me about i mean i wasn't doing any arabic with it mm-hmm. the first time so but in english it probably took me kind of like you know 3 about you know 3 days in a coffee shop to kind of yeah you know uh read it that's quite about right yeah that's how people read 3 3 days is the minimum amount you should take to read the quran i mean it's some framework around that like 3 below 3 is not recommended so just kind of um 
couple of clarifying questions. Uh -huh. You talked about um, the sort of you know the translation of the Quran you read, and so my basic understanding is is essentially one Arabic text, but you still have lots of different translations of the Quran. Yeah. Are there any you, you'd like recommend over others? So they're good ones, they're bad ones, because there are definitely bad Bible translations. Okay, yes. So I'd preface this with like no translation can match the original Arabic text, right? The translation is just a helper, right? For people who do not understand the language. The moment you translate, you also come with a perspective because you can only translate once, right? It's just one line. You can't say, this also probably translates to this, this also translates to this, this also translates to that, which is a fact. It does translate to multiple viewpoints. The same verse, maybe one word could mean do two different things. But then to not confuse the reader, you have to stick to one interpretation. So a translation is also an interpretation, right? It comes with it. It's, it's, just, it's just the way how translations work. So to answer your question, Specifically, Muhsin Khan is one I started with. Uh, it's 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 a little bit more uh, Saudiized in a way, in the sense that uh, it comes with the uh, Salafi kind of perspective to it, very much like Tawheed, uh, uh, kind of uh, pushing that kind of uh, narrative, sort of. Yeah. Uh, which is fine. I'm saying that it's it's it's, it's you you feel that 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 uh, the current. Uh, Salafi stand is very much uh, uh, projected in those translations. Okay. Um, Abdullah Yusuf Ali is another one that kind of comes from somebody who has some uh, some exposure to Christian, uh, you know, ideas or, or even the language. Yes. A little bit more. Well, it reads like the King James Bible. Yeah. Which, yeah. It, which is kind of curious because you kind of read the Yusuf Ali translation, assuming it's kind of like, you know, 500 years old. Uh huh. But it's not that old, right? It's what? 100 years old? 100 years old? Some, less than that, yeah. But, but uh, yeah. So, so that's, that's where that is coming from. And you have like a commentary in the beginning, which is, which is not really necessarily based on hadith. It's kind of his interpretation, sort of, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, yeah. Out, of, uh, out of his understanding uh, of the Quran. And, and like, I am nobody to comment on, you know, what approach is right or this, but there is, there is this uh, principle that when you interpret the Quran, even if you interpret it correctly, you're wrong sort of thing. Like, like you should not try to reinterpret the Quran is what, yeah. what it's like, like, uh, yeah, you shouldn't try to reinterpret it. So it has to be based on sound knowledge, uh, which is either the way how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he taught or his companions taught. So there must be some basis is, is something. So I don't want to go into the academics of this, but, but that's, that's some principles around interpreting because it's, it's, a, it's a big matter. You are interpreting the word of God, right? The literal yeah. word of God. So I suppose even if you think somebody is you're right, it's helpful to know the interpretive framework they're using. Mm -hmm. whether they're you know, Salafi or Sufi or, you know, whatever their exact worldview would be, mm -hmm. may be helpful to be aware of as you're reading a translation of something. Yeah, it's, it's, it's good to know. So that's Sahih. I think Sahih International is good. I've never read a, like a hard copy of it. Like, but I've seen like whenever I go online, like I just do Quran.com slash 2 slash 23 to land quickly onto a translation. Yeah. So, so it's like a very good website. Quran.com yep. slash chapter 2, 2 slash verse number 5050 and you're there like you have it like it's a very good way to quickly land on a verse and i think they pick sahi international and it's decent yeah i i mostly look for like hey i don't know what this word means the specific word means can i just get that get there i mean it's so cool to be able to live in the internet age <laughs> now right yes. it's like I, I have this with uh like the bible as well because also the bible is written in Greek and Hebrew. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's helpful to know what a, like a word is and where it's used. Yes. And it's so easy to do that now, mm. which is amazing. Yes, yes, we have. Yeah. So, so another thing that was, you know, talk somebody through who's kind of like reading this for the first time. For the first time I read the Quran, the ordering of it is a little jarring. 
mm -hmm. because it, it doesn't read like a book you'd read in the West. It doesn't read yeah. like the Bible, which has its kind of inbuilt sort of chronology. Yeah. Um, how do you advise somebody sort of navigating that the first time they're reading? Yes, I, 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 I kind of felt this might come up. So, I mean, I don't have a very prepared answer for this. I would say, um, so it's kind of part of the beauty of the Quran that that is possible because you are not really following a sequence. Like a book would read like, hey, this is chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, right? And if you don't know what happened in chapter one and chapter two, chapter three is kind of like doesn't make enough sense. Yeah. Right? That, that's how a book is read, right? You, you can't just jump to chapter eight and expect to understand anything uh, significant. But the Quran is not like that, right? It's not even used like that. It was not even revealed in sequence. Right, right, right. Right? It was revealed like the first thing that was revealed was Surah 93, Iqra. And then you have Surah 73, Muzzammil. Then you have 74. And then you have this, there. It, it just like it was if you just go chronologically, it's a way different Quran. Right, right. right. The way it was revealed. Uh, so what the Quran and the Quran is not used you know, like an academic book, right? It's a good, it's a book for guidance, right? It's not a story book. It's not like you are 20% there and you have 80% to go. That's not how it is. It is something that we recite every day in our prayers, right? Five times a day. Right. You're reciting Surah to Nas, you're reciting this, you're reciting that. So you can start from anywhere and it's not like you're at this point in the Quran. It's just a part of the Quran. So, so the Quran, when even at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, was not one book, right? The Mus'haf was compiled after the Prophet ﷺ, right, in right. the time of Abu Bakr. Yeah. Right? So, even though it comes in the format of a book, it was not revealed like that. It was not used like that either. Uh, so, what I'm coming to is, now your question was, how do you, so, so the readers will understand that this is how the book came. It did not come in the sequence. It did not come, you have it in one you know, peace, that doesn't mean that that's how it's supposed to be read or, or understood. So, it's supposed to be like, hey, I need help. I'm going to open it. Uh, and probably if you know where it is. But otherwise, you could be doing nothing and you could just pick up the Quran and read from the middle. And you would be in somewhere, some story. Or it could be something about some principles. It could be something about rituals. It could be anything. And there is guidance in it. So I guess, uh, and that, and that maybe it push back on this if the analogy is bad, but uh, earlier today when I was taking the microphones for the podcast, okay. um, one of them had unpaired somehow and wasn't taking in any audio. So I had to look up the instruction manual on how to you know, work the microphone. I didn't read through the whole thing as a story. I was just like, uh, okay, how the heck do I pair the Bluetooth cut again? Uh-huh. Yes. yes. So, so, that, so is like that kind of how, is that part of it? Yes. Yes. So, so the Quran... In, in many cultures, even today, is do, they do not prefer to have the Mus'haf. The Qur'an should live in our hearts. Right? It's, it's in our hearts. It's like you memorize it. Right? So I know like around a third of the Qur'an by heart. Right? And this is not because I came from a religious background or whatever. I just like to memorize the Qur'an. And it is possible right, that I can like... In one sitting, maybe not in one sitting today, but I could potentially read you 200 pages of the Quran letter by letter, vowel by vowel, without a mistake, in sequence, read it out to you. Right? So it's supposed to be in your in your heart. So when you have a problem, it's supposed to play. Like I, I said, Surah Baqarah, page number 10 or 11, wherever it is. It's supposed to be there for retrieval from here, not from the book. I don't need to open the book and find out that. that that's, that's, that's also possible. That is, you know, for clarification or whatever, for reference, but it's supposed to be here. And in here, it's not going to go in sequence. It's just, it's just there. You know where it needs to, when you need to pick it up. The instruction manual, if you know, there's a Bluetooth issue, you know that the settings is in, uh, in your iPhone settings, Bluetooth there. You don't know which position in your memory it is, but you know where it is. That's how it is. It's supposed to be in the heart. Yeah, okay. So, so in order to achieve that, though, 
you've got to be able to have a grasp of the recitation and you've got to have a grasp of the meanings, right? Yes. Yes. So you'd, you'd actively encourage people, you know, pursue both, right? Figure out the recitation. Because I think, again, one thing that I think a lot of like non-Muslims miss is the importance of reci reciting the Quran in yes. a sort of Islamic mindset, because there's a sort of cadence and poetry to yeah. it that yeah. makes it more accessible. Yeah, it's, it's the beauty of the Quran, right? And, and even when you like do it with kids, right? If you want the kids to remember something, you kind of sing along with them, they learn quicker stays in memory quicker and they can retrieve it quicker like twinkle twinkle little star if you if it was something I would say oh give me a paragraph about stars it would be like ah oh, there's a star it's twinkling somewhere but then it's like twinkle twinkle little star how I wonder what you are just comes around nobody speaks like that but still it just comes so the you know there is there is inherently a human ability to uh, to kind of memorize things in, you know, in melody or, and, 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 and that is a huge part of the miracle of the Quran, the, the melody of it. So I think the next kind of question I have is, especially the first time I read the Quran, there's a lot of things that you're kind of expected to sort of understand, not everything, right? Some things are sort of, you know, obvious, but say, when you're reading about, so when I'm reading about Yusuf or Musa, mm -hmm. I, I know where I am and I understand what's being referenced there. But when it comes to people like uh, the Mood, the people of Ard, uh, Salah, I, I don't, there's, there's some information in the Quran, which isn't, is, is almost dependent on, if you want to understand that particular piece, finding information that's outside of the Quran. Mm -hmm. So, it's almost like the uh, Quran is like the sun of the Islamic universe, mm -hmm. which everything rotates around. Okay. Um, but then the, the sort of Islamic solar system has other pieces mm -hmm. that bring clarity to the yeah. Quran. And how, does, how would you advise somebody who's sort of new to that world to figure out, okay, what is the context for what's being said here if they want to understand it? Okay. Yeah, that's a good question. And I did not go to that, right? So, you, you, you are not allowed to or you shouldn't recite Quran in isolation, right? The Quran, you cannot be a person, you can't say I'm a Muslim and I believe only in the Quran. That makes no sense. Because the Quran will only tell you, establish salah, establish prayer. Does it say how many times? No. Does it say when? Here and there, yes. But it doesn't say how the ritual goes. No. So how are you going to do it? It tells you give zakah, give give charity, the compulsory charity. Does it tell you how much? No. Does it tell you when? No. So like how are you going to implement it? So the Quran is a guide, is a directional guide, right? It's supposed to motivate you. It's supposed to remind you. It's supposed to encourage you um, and some details are mentioned for important things like marriage, for divorce. These kind of things are like very clearly mentioned. But the actual ritualistic aspects come from the Sunnah, which is why the Quran was not sent like as a book. Like, hey, here's the book, go deal with it. No, Allah sent the Quran and a prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, peace and blessings be upon him. Uh, and he did that with every book, right? He does not simply send out a book and say, go figure, right? He sends a guide with it, right? Um, uh, he, he, in multiple places in the Quran, it says, I have sent down a book and the sunnah and a guide. And, 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 and sunnah usually refers to the, the, the way. Sunnah definitely means kind, kind of like way or the way of the prophet uh, is what sunnah. So it's always you take your learnings of Islam from two things not one okay one is a book and the other is a an example of the book right uh quran as the wife of the prophet said that his his uh, his 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 character was the quran so he was uh quran walking on the earth right so you have the example 
of the Quran in the Prophet uh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that was the case with Jesus, that was the case with Abraham, that was the case with Moses. A book was sent and a man was sent to exemplify that, uh, th those ideals that you can live up to. And that, that was not an angel, that was just a man. Uh, Musa was a man, Abraham was a man, Jesus was a man, Muhammad was a man. There is nothing special about him other than the fact that he had the message revealed to him by God, by God through Gabriel, Jibreel alayhi salam. That's all. So, so you cannot learn the Quran in isolation. There are some people who do that, uh, but they are kind of in, uh, they are, they are, they're not on the right path. I have a, I actually have a Quranist friend. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a great guy. I'm desperately trying to get him on the podcast uh -huh. at some point. Uh, may, I, I should introduce you guys at some point. It's be a fun conversation. Yes, maybe you can have a three try or trinity here. Uh, yeah, there you go. Good, good, ref, good reference there. Good, uh, good thematic callback for this podcast. Um, so, yeah. So, but honestly, uh, just re you're reading the Quran myself. It kind of it seems to sort of assume this sort of like living community with it, which takes a very sort of important and a sort of built in authority structure mm -hmm. as well. Um, because you've got the Al Al Dhikr in the Quran, the people of knowledge. Okay, Ahl al Dhikr, yeah. Okay, okay all right, close enough. Okay. Um, and then um, you've got, I remember it, it, at some point it talks about the Quran and the Hikmah. Yeah, Hikmah, yeah, Hikmah is the word. I, I, I kind of miss it, yeah. Yes. Um, I, again, I've got to spread my like twelve words of Arabic like thin butter over a no, no, over no, no, piece no. of toast. You're you're attempting. Even I don't know much about Christian theology, so you might get the same from me. That's it's fine. Just, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. Um. So. So so okay. So so you've got you've got the community. You've got the you've got the the Sunnah, like specifically the sort of Sitta Hadith. Would you consider yourself a sort of basically a traditional Sunni Muslim as far as your view on Hadith? Yes. So let's, um, so would then the thing to do be somebody to read the Quran and Sahih al-Bukhari next to each other, or are there some missing steps there? Uh, they have two separate reads. Uh, like I wouldn't sit to, with them together. What, what you would do with the Quran, would you would have a tafsir next to it, like tafsir ibn Kathir. That is basically something that explains the Quran, the explanation of the Quran. So the 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 verse would be taken in context of what did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, peace be upon him, what did he mention about this verse? Is there a story around it? So you would, and the tafsir is what does that. The tafsir, it explains the Arabic part of it, like what does those, what do those words mean and is what is the significance of this word being here? And they also go into the sababu uh, nuzul, the reason for its revelation, for its sending down, right? So there might be a story behind it. Why? And and uh, so you might say, like you take an example. Woman ahsanu qawla mimman da'a ila Allahi wa amila salihan wa qala innani min al muslimin translates to who is better in speech than the one who calls to Allah. And, and does good deeds, uh, and he says, I am among the Muslims, right? Now, that's a very verse, and you could interpret, and, and that's the rough translation, and it has a generic meaning that, you know, what uh, what a better speech, yeah, what is the better speech? right? And which is the speech, or who is the speech uh, that is better? So, you calling upon me telling you, to, you know, about Islam, and that is the best speech. You are calling towards the Lord, right? And, uh, and that is important and that is really great. But then there is a reason behind that revelation and that is because it came around uh, the Adhan. So it really refers to the call to prayer. And now you say, who is better in speech than the one who calls to prayer? The Mu'azzin. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. You know the, the call to prayer that happens? So it's ref it, the, the, the reason for the revelation was that. So that's the actual context. Yes, you can apply it into an, a generic sense also, but then that context is not mentioned there. It is mentioned in the, in the hadith. Sure, sure, sure. So a tafsir like Ibn Kathir is going to bring together 
the hadith, the history, the Quran kind of put it together in a sort of fairly neat package. Correct. That if you're missing that context, you can go find it there. So, okay, this is actually a question I genuinely do not know the answer to. Mm -hmm. Would you can would to me, would Ibn Kathir be considered part of the Sunnah, or would that only refer to like the the hadith? It's a mix of both. It's the Tafsir Ibn Kathir would go in sequence like the Quran. You will have like the verse of the Quran it starts with chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, exactly like just follows along the Quran, and it explains upon a verse or a group of verses. That's it. So it's Quran explained in the light of uh, Arabic and Hadith. So, so what I mean, sorry, sorry, what I mean is, so all Muslims agree on the Quran. Yes. Right, Sunni and Shia. Yes. And then you know, the sort of four main schools of Sunni Islam will believe in the Sitta, right? Will believe in Sahih al-Bukhari, Sahih Muslim as basically yeah. being like the gold standard of Hadith collection. Yes, yes. So with, so with something like Ibn Kathir, are these tafsirs that heavily agreed upon, or is there is it a little looser than that, or how how much authority does Ibn Kathir have in the sort of like life of the average Muslim? So, Tafsir Ibn Kathir is more academic. It was written seven hundred years after uh, you know the the Islamic uh, uh, or or the death of the Prophet So he's around six hundred seven hundred after Hijrah. That's like 1400 AD, right? It's 700 years after. So for the first 700 years, there was nobody. That's not how it is, right? People used to explain it. They used to have their own books. But Tafsir Ibn Kathir is a very good uh, compilation of, uh, of, of the explanation of the Quran. Right? There are multiple Tafsirs. There are Tafsir Tabari, there is Tafsir this, that. There's so much, so many Tafsirs. So people can pick up any Tafsir. I just... Uh, I and many people uh, usually consider Tafsir Ibn Kathir as the number one Tafsir, right? So, so it's not like it's it's not prescriptive. It just and and Tafsir Ibn Kathir, if you read it, is very. It's kind of boring because it's very academic. Yeah. There's an abridged version which is slightly less academic, and plus we are not Arab. So it was written in Arabic. Somebody's translated it. It's yeah. ten volumes. It's huge. It's not for the average Muslim. It is not for the average Muslim, but for somebody who's trying to understand a specific verse, it's a good reference. Okay, cool. That's that's helpful. Um, so, so you've got, so you've got the, so if you want to understand the Quran, uh, somebody has a question about the Quran, uh, the, the, as as they're reading it, you say you don't read it in isolation. What should be the first thing they do? Should the, the first thing they do be to talk to their imam or a sheikh or do the first thing to read al tabri what would you what would you recommend the process be if somebody has a question about something in the quran yeah that's that's a very good question so day to day a lot of the muslims today they use a mobile app to recite the quran uh there's a lot of quran apps so uh you look at the quran and many of these apps now also offer the translation right below it and the translation like i mentioned is not enough right because it doesn't provide any context it's just a rough translation uh, of the verse. Now, many of these apps also have tafsir in it. So you go to the triple dot, you will say tafsir, and that will open usually tafsir ibn Kathir. And you can have multiple options. So there are like some that offer two, three tafsirs. So for the average Muslim, what I would say is you should just use one of those apps. I can, one that I use is Al Quran by this uh, company called Green Tech Apps. Uh, uh, nice brother who built that app. They have, it's a decent app. And you can just go triple dot and there is like more details of tafsir. And then it just reads out in like a two page, one page or two page, what the context of the verse is, what is it talking about. And that's enough mostly. What is better is people today don't read, right? I mean, most people, most of our generation is not familiar with reading. They're more familiar with listening or watching, right? So there is this uh, good collection of videos by uh, Ustad Numan Ali Khan, uh, Bayina.tv, right? So uh, they have the whole Quran, uh, verse by verse, concise commentary. And that's relevant to our time as well. So it's kind of uh, referring to multiple tafsirs uh, and it's like kind of uh, social commentary on it. 
you would have one verse, two minutes, one minute, three minutes, maybe it's like a collection of verses. So I feel that was very useful for me uh, to understand the context of it because somebody who's 700 years ago is going to explain it in his worldview and his world situation, right? Right, right, right. It's like the Mongols are about to take Baghdad and that's, this is what this verse means, right? I mean, uh, yeah, something in that context, right? So he doesn't understand. So now in our time when we say we are not wasting, we are not spending time wisely, you're like, hey, social media, right? 700 years ago, there's no social media. 700 years ago, people might be, I don't know, doing whatever, right? They are just busy with business or whatever. And that's, that is what it is, right? Uh, our times have changed. So I feel that is very relevant commentary. And I actually try, uh, I had a bit of a discussion with Ustad Numan Ali Khan. And we had, we had some uh, partnership where I, I, I wanted to look. So I, I'm very passionate about the Quran, right? So I see this as three things. Uh, and I don't know what the time is. You're good, you're good. Quickly, uh, when you approach the Quran, there are three things about the Quran. One is you need to know how to read. Or, uh, there's like, the, you approach the Quran with reading and recital. Right, so just the just going with the melody, right? Just, just having it in your heart, uh, memorizing all of that is part of that. Read, recite, memorize. Number two is understand, right? What is it talking about, right? There's the translation, there is the explanation, and that's that's understanding. And number three is acting upon it, right? Hey, somebody says, uh, somebody says uh, in the in the Quran it says. Uh, be good to your parents, send them a gift, uh, donate, donate to a charitable cause, right? So that's the act of it, right? So there's three, you know, parts of this triangle, this trinity, right? And, and, uh, Islamic trinity on record. Uh, yes. So read, understand, act, right? I wanted to kind of make that happen. So I kind of created a mobile app. So I'm also a mobile app developer. So I, I, Kind of take up an open source app and kind of made those modifications. So the whole thing was, hey, if somebody wants to read, he can read. If he wants to know more, yes, you can read the tafsir, which is not what people do. What if you could just watch a video about it? Three minutes, right there. Tuck, open video link. And then you understand what it means. Move on to the next. Right. And then in the same context, you also provide a way to act upon it. Right there. Because people have low attention spans these days. You can't like expect them to read it three hours later, act upon it. You just lost an opportunity there for good, for doing good, for actually doing good. So that's 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 how I would I would approach it. So so yeah, your question was how does the average person approach the Quran in understanding it and acting upon it? This is how I would enable that. Great. Well, I think that's an excellent starting point. Um, I think you gave a great overview. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for your time. Yes. We will be back on the next episode. Thank you for watching the Almeida Initiative podcast.